I think it, it broadens a person's mind to understand that other cultures approach aspects of daily life in different manners. One of the aspects of Chinese culture that I really enjoy is the depth of history that one can see in almost any object. You can look at a painting and you can see references to many different aspects of history, of the culture, to thinking and expression. I had studied art in, as an undergraduate as well as Chinese, and then I ended up going to the Central Academy of Arts in Beijing. And though I had wanted to study painting, Chinese painting, while I was there, I was actually put into the Chinese art history course. Suddenly I was exposed to the wonderful history of Chinese art and Chinese painting. And got excited about that history, got interested in all different types of Chinese art. I wrote a book and put together an exhibition at the same time and traveled it around the United States. And before I knew it, I suddenly was a curator of Chinese art. When I first came to the Museum of Fine Arts, I gave a talk and a woman stood up and she was holding an eight by 10 photograph of a Guanyin sculpture. And it was a sculpture that we now have in the Song Gallery. And she said, when is this object coming back on view? And I said, I have no idea. I just arrived here, but I will find out. And what I discovered is that this is an object that came to the museum in 1920, and it was on view in the museum until 1999. And it was a very much loved sculpture. And it had been in, off of view and in storage because it needed some conservation. And since it's been back out on display, so many people, American people, people who have no connection to Chinese culture have come up to me and said, this is my favorite object in the whole museum and I'm so glad it's back on display. It's called the Bodhisattva of Compassion and it's really touching to see how this object that was made almost a thousand years ago in a country, thousands and thousands of miles away, a very different time, a very different culture, but somehow it touches people. The Museum of Fine Arts is privileged to have an incredible collection of Sung art. Now, the Sung Dynasty goes from 960 to 1279. In China, the Sung Dynasty was a very urbanized culture. They had a much more conceptual and abstract concept of art. And in putting together this gallery, really what I wanted to do was give our visitors, our contemporary visitors, a sense of the Sung aesthetic, the, the sense of refinement and, and refinement through restraint. I have been involved in a project in the Forbidden City for over the past 10 years. The 
project is the Chemung Garden Conservation Project, and I'm an advisor to World Monuments Fund who collaborates with the Palace Museum on this project. We discovered more things behind other artworks that had been hidden for 250 years that were in absolutely perfect condition because they had been covered up for so long. And we were able to bring these to the United States and exhibit them. The project I'm working on right now in Chinese is called Ba Po, Eight Brokens. And it's a type of painting that arose in the second half, half of the 19th century and kind of died away in the middle of the 20th century and was basically forgotten about. These are paintings that look like somebody took old calligraphies and paintings and old pages from books, ripped them up, burned them, wormholes eaten through them, and then pasted them randomly on a surface of a paper. But instead of these being collages, they were actually trompe l'oeil. They are painted, but painted to look real. And when I first saw these, I thought, wow, what is this about? And I thought, maybe this is all about being anti-tradition, just ripping up all the old wonderful treasures of Chinese art history. But in fact, I, I slowly learned that it was more about nostalgia. It was people seeing their old treasures disappearing and deteriorating and people losing respect and interest for these wonderful ancient treasures. Most people didn't know anything about them and even today I show them to Chinese art historians and they look at it and they say, Chinese people did that? And when did they do this? When I look at Chinese art, I think of it as Chinese visual culture, not just fine art. I look at visual objects that are created by all different types of people within a society. That it's not the, just the fine artists with the well-known signatures, but it's also people in the countryside who are making patchwork quilts for their beds, or it's people making woodblock prints because they can't afford to have original paintings hanging on their walls. Chinese society is very rich in, in visual culture and I think it's important to recognize everything that contributes to our visual surroundings. <laughs>